שלום אביוואן, חודש טוב והפי חנוכה, uh, the month of uh, Capricorn, Tevet, or the sign of Gdi, in Hebrew Gdi, it's always on the Hanukkah. And why? Because Hanukkah is adding some power of spiritual light into the month of Capricorn, and we'll see why. Why Tevet? So first about the basic, very shallow aspect. The month of Tevet is uh, the first month of the winter in the Zodiac, which means if we divide the year into four quarters, the last quarter is the winter, and the month of Tevet, Capricorn, is the beginning of it. Also, we know physically in the Northern Hemisphere, it's the darkest time of the year The month of Tibet starts always when it's the time of the shortest day of the year. So it's the longest night. Now, what does it give us? There's some kind of dark attitude about the month of uh, Tibet and also about people who are born in this month and they are considered to be of the sign of Capricorn. Let, let us see from which direction. Uh, we, we, there are a few directions you can deal with. And let us start first with the name of the month. The, main, the name of the Hebrew month is Tevet. Something that is uh, very, uh, I don't remember where did I see it, but in some places, some rabbis say Tevet is missing the letter Vav. If you, have, you add Vav, To the word Tevet, you get Tovot. Tovot means goodies. It's a month supposed to be the month of goodies. Problem, no goodies. Whoever was born in the month of Tevet knows life is not full of goodies. Life is full of good, very hard work. Okay? And you have to be serious about it. This is something we have to remember. So this... So what is this like little kind of thing about the, the Tevet losing the Vav? Here we're going to something more serious. We know that the 12 sons of Jacob, they symbolize, and later on the 12 tribes of Israel, they symbolize the 12 signs of the Zodiac. Now there, there are two sets of naming uh, the uh, months with the tribes. One is the way they were born, and two, as they were camping in the desert. And that's why sometimes you see a contradiction between the two. And the way the Kabbalists explain it, it's like, Shelo kivriyatan shimushan. It's not always the way they've been created, that's how they function later on. So when we're talking about the, uh, the uh, birth of the tribes, We're talking about the connection to one set of zodiac signs. And when we're talking about later on, when they become tribes and they're already camping in the desert, in the symbol of the zodiac sign, which means around the tabernacle, there were three tribes on the south, three to the north, three to the east, three to the west, which is against like corresponding to the four seasons, and the three months of every season. Now, but if we go about the way they, they were born, so the tribe of God, G-A-D, the tribe of God is connected in many books to the month of Tevet. Now, how was God born? The story is that uh, Leah gave her... Uh, maid, Zilpa, was half-sister of her. She was, all, she, she was a concubine of Jacob. And one night that Jacob was supposed to come to her bed, she put Leah, put her maid, Zilpa, in bed because she was not giving birth anymore. So she said, if Rachel gave her maid, Bilha, to Jacob and she had two sons out of her, Okay, maybe I can do it also with my maid. And she gave her to Jacob without Jacob knowing. 
Now there's a whole discourse about it, about Jacob not knowing. Same thing that Reuben, when he was born, Jacob thought that that was, that was the first night with Leah, but he was sure that this is Rachel. So came, Reuben came out, and we know that Reuben was supposed to be the firstborn of Jacob, and that means he was supposed to have the kingdom, the birthright, okay, and also the leadership. So, which means twice the, uh, twice the inheritance as the other brothers. And Reuben did not, did not get neither of them. And he was also pushed out. And when the tribe of Reuben settles, they settle across the east to the river Jordan behind the Dead Sea. So when we are talking about Reuben and where, why did that happen? So the Rabbi Isaac Luria explains to us there was a lack because of a lack of, there's a lack of fortune, because a lack of consciousness, and when there's no really connection, no real connection with consciousness and awareness, there will be a lack with whatever it comes to good fortune and success. Now, here we come with the story about the birth of God. Here there was why Leah did not learn, so we understand, we're not talking, it's not, it's not a soap opera, the Torah. It's about all of those stories, are cover-up stories for much deeper, deeper understandings. So we understand there was some lack in the birth of God. And when God is being born, and Leah is excited that it is again a boy. And she says, Ba God. Ba means in Hebrew, here comes. God means in Hebrew, good fortune. Okay, so she calls him God, good fortune. However, in the Torah itself, it's being read Ba God, but it's written Bagad. The letter Aleph drops and becomes instead of two words, Ba, Bet Aleph, God, Gimel Dalet becomes one word, Bet Dimel Dalet. So instead of Bagad, here comes good fortune, it becomes Bagad, which means treason. Treason <coughs> means disappearance of something good. And when we come to this place, we are understanding that we have, how should I say, there is a kind of what the, what the uh, Kabbalistic astrology says, it's the month of Tevet was supposed to be full of light and good fortune. However, something made it go away. So there's always a sense of missing something, always a sense of a loss. I'm supposed to have some more. So that sense of loss and insecurity can get the person into a very low place. And that's why we know that most people who are born under a strong influence of the month of Capricorn, they have a strong sense of insecurity, anxiety, fear, of rejection and fear of loss. And usually you can see a lot of people of the sign of Capricorn going through many disasters through their, their lives in which it's like the word, the, the, uh, the verse that says, Asher yagor tibali, whatever I was anxious about here, it came and happened to me, which means we can see a connection between the anxiety on one hand and the loss of many losses. Many, many kids in regular astrology, astrology speaks about that Capricorn children, they're born old. It's like they're born in a background 
of a loss of lack. And because of that, they need to take responsibility even when they are young. I'm not saying that it happens to everyone who was born in the month of Tevet, but that aspect is very powerful, very important. And the question is why? Why in this month there is a sense of darkness and loss of good fortune? The plus with that is that people that were born in the month of Tevet, you can find them in a place they do not believe in good luck. They believe in very hard work. These are people that they must take control over their lives. They don't leave anything to chance, very responsible, very methodic, okay, very knowledgeable, and they simply work hard and they need to be in control. That's why most people of the sign of Capricorn do not like to work for somebody else. They need to be their own boss. They are very, they are control freaks, a lot of them. And remember, when we say that Capricorn are so and so, we have to remember that we are talking about the kind of idealistic Capricorn. Something like this has never been created. A creature like this does not exist. Why? Every person, every person was born with a background. And symbolizing that background is it's not just the month of your birth, it's also the time of your birth, and then the chart of your birth. And the chart of your birth is not just your sun sign or your moon sign, it's also your time of birth, which means your rising sign, and also the influence, the influence of the different planets and houses in the zodiac over. So every human being is a combination of all 12 signs of the zodiac. No one, God forbid, is only under the influence of one sign alone. Okay, remember that. So we, there's no one in on this earth that has exactly the same characteristic as the sun sign or the moon sign that he was born. If you're talking about the moon sign, which means the moon sign starts on Rosh Chodesh, and therefore it's very simple. If you want to know what is your sign, soul sign, according to Kabbalah, just look at your Hebrew birthday. If you're born in the month of Tevet, you are Capricorn. Yeah, but if Let's say I was born before December 20, 21st or something like this. What, what, and I was born in the month of, let's say I was born in the month of Capricorn. So you have a sun sign of Sagittarius, but if you're born in Tevet, okay? Like somebody was born today. So today is uh, December 15th, sun sign, Sagittarius. But it's already Rosh Chodesh, the new moon of Tevet. So if a baby is born right now, he is Tevet with his soul side, but he has very strong influence of Sagittarius. Okay, so it's not that simple about every person. And you can find one person who was born in one sign that is exactly the same as a sign. But we are learning about it because we want to connect to the powers of this month so we can understand how does this map influence us and how we are supposed to behave during this map, which means how to be careful uh, about the obstacles that might happen to us and how to deal with all the challenges that we are supposed to face. Every month has its own different uh, lessons to make. Okay, so why is it that Capricorn have that bad name of control freaks, anxiety, and sometimes the anxiety is so deep, it drives the person really crazy. I'm talking about clinical crazy, okay? Which is the highest rate of mental disorder. You can, from all 12 signs of the Zodiac, 
it's for Capricorn. Why does it drive them crazy? A lot of them, not most of them. Now, first of all, if we look at it from a Kabbalistic point of view, there are a few ways to look at it. We'll we start with the uh, more methodic logic to explain why is it that a certain sign has certain influences and attributes. And let us explain. If we're talking about the 12 months of the zodiac, and they are divided to four sections, three months each, that reminds us the four sephirot represented by the four letters of the tetragrammaton. Yud for the spring, this is Firat Chochma. Hey, for the summer, this is Firat Bina. Vav for the fall, Sfirat Tiferet, or Ze'er Anpin. And Hey, the last day, Malchut, which is Sfirat, which is Sfirat Malchut. This is for the winter. So if we understand that the whole three months of the winter, they are under the influence of Sfirat Malchut, Malchut is the final part of the tree of life. So no wonder this is Malchut is always the energy of the element of earth. Earth means A, practical, B, hardworking, A, C, not easy life because you're practical and you're looking to work. Okay, you're down to earth. And the other one is there's no so there's not so much light shining already on the fourth sign of the zodiac. So the fourth, the four, the three zodiac signs of the winter, they are into earth, and earth means Kabbalistically means need. And therefore, if we're talking about Capricorn, Capricorn are very needy for control over their lives in order to create balance because they're very much afraid of losing it, losing control. We'll see soon why. So usually that fear of loss of control drives them very hard into making a lot of money, and a property so they can have some kind of insurance, some security, they are not going to be thrown the, uh, to the streets. Now, the sign of, uh, the next sign, the sign of Aquarius, they are very much in need to connections, knowledge, knowing people, very needy. They must, that's their hunger, that's their thirst. Okay, and to all kinds of wisdom that is connected to the bigger picture. Okay, Capricorn, they are also after wisdom in the lower mode, wisdom of how the rules are working. That's why you find a lot of lawyers, accountants. You want, you know, you are Capricorn and you want to know how does it work? What are the laws? So you feel more secure when you know the laws. Now, the third sign of the winter, which is Pisces, here you have need for affection, for love, for warmth, for uh, caring. Uh, and it's, it's, very, it's very different, but there's also very strong need and also for information. Now, so you have like these three signs. From the three signs, we have always every group of three signs is divided like, you know, everything in the world, right, left, and center. Proton, electron, neutron, plus, minus, and the neutral. Okay, so the, the, the plus, the right column, this is Capricorn. So Capricorn has that it is the right column of the month, the months of the winter. Right column is also water. So you have inside 
Capricorn, the aspect of water, which means they have that you can find a lot of Capricorns that they have that sense of giving. Why? Because it is right and honest. These are the laws of the universe. You should do it. You should give it because of that. It's a giving that because this is the law. That's the way it should be. Now, it is also from what everybody knows about all the zodiac signs. You have another set of uh, definition of elements, and everybody knows the Capricorn are an earth sign. So you have first layer earth because it is the winter. Second layer water because it's the first month of the winter. Winter. Third layer it is earth again because uh, that's the sequences of the um, zodiac signs. If you notice that if we're saying that the spring is the energy of youth, chokhmah, fire, okay? So the first sign of the spring, is, of the spring, Aries, is a fire sign in Western astrology. Summer. The first summer is water because it's Bina, Hafez Chesed. Okay? It's Bina, the energy of water, affection, and so on, and emotionality. So the first month of the summer is uh, uh, the month of Cancer, which is a water sign. Okay? And then here we go to the fall, Vav, which is Zeranpin. This is air. And the first month of the, so the fall, which is Libra, this is an air sign. And here we have the winter. It's an earth season. The first one will be earth again. So we have the month of Capricorn, three layers, earth, water, and, er and earth. So we have double earth. Double earth, and then comes on top of it, to remind us, in the moment we have double earth, that means, and we know earth is malchut, it is desire, ambition, and thirst. And <clears throat> this is why we have that strong sense of thirst and hunger in Capricorn. Hunger for everything, for power and for knowledge and whatever gives you power and a sense of control, okay? So, also you have some dryness. They are very, you know, Capricorns are very kind of square people. Most of them naturally born square, white, double earth. This is it, and go back to the loss of the Vav. Tovot becomes Tevet. The loss of the Aleph, Bagad. Here comes good fortune and becomes treason. The Aleph falls, and the Aleph, the letter Aleph, is a symbol of the light because in Hebrew the word for the the word for light is all starting with the letter Aleph. So the Aleph symbolizes the light of God, the real light, the real spiritual light. So the loss of the Aleph shows about a lot of emptiness and neediness. Okay, now, as we say, there's no sign, zodiac sign, that is bad or good. Okay, each zodiac sign is whatever you make of it. Every person is born in a situation that is always for the good. The question is, are you taking the opportunity? So the question is, what do we do if we are Capricorn, or we're just starting the month of Tevet, what do we do with these forces of dryness? Dryness means being needy, getting into anxiety very, very easily, feeling the horror and the shock that here I'm going to lose it all. And you know, when we are, we are we, um, being pushed into action out of lack, it doesn't bring us to a good place. Okay, so how we over, how do we overcome that? So that is the most important thing is why, what, uh, what is that we have to do as, if you're born as a Capricorn, 
or we are right now experiencing the month of Tevet in order to turn all of these lacks into good fortune and good success. Now, in order to understand that, we should learn about a few more things, and this is about another aspect of defining the zodiac sign, and that's from the book of formation, speaking about the Hebrew letters. Now, we know that the month of Tevet, according to Abraham the Patriarch, the tradition, the tradition says he authored the book of formation that explains the construction of the universe. And over there, Abram the Patriarch is teaching us that the month of Capricorn was created with the letter Ein. The letter Ein. The letter Ein is a very important letter because it it's number 70. And 70 is reaching to a certain height uh, of awareness because Ein also means an eye in Hebrew. Okay? There's another aspect over here. The planet, the ruling planet of the month of Capricorn is planet Saturn, or in Hebrew, Shabtai. Shabtai. And this one was created, according to Abraham the Patriarch, with the letter Bet. Keitzad, I'm reading for the Book of Formation. Imlich ot Bet b'chayim. The Creator gave the, the crown to the letter Bet in life. V'kashar lo keter v'tzarbo and formed with the letter Bet Shabtai ba'olam, planet Saturn in as a universal force. Yom Rishon Bashana, the first day in the uh, time, time uh, dimension, and Ayn Yamin, the right eye in the physical body. Okay, so what does what do we make out of it? So, first of all, if we realize that the letter Ayn is for the month of Capricorn, and the letter Bet is for planet Saturn. Whoever knows a little Kabbalah, here we get already the letter combination of the month is Ein Bet. Ein Bet is 72. So do you want to tell us that in this month we have the magical power of the 72 names of God? And whoever masters the 72 names of God, he masters nature. He masters the ability to overcome nature. The answer is yes, it is a very, very big, fat hint or a clue that in this month, how grim it looks like in regular astrology or just in the this, in this, in this shallow level, how deep it can go with the awesome power hidden in this month. What is the power of the 72 names? 72 names on the number 72 is reaching the level of Chochmah. Chochmah, this is wisdom. And wisdom means this in, Kabbal, in Hebrew, when we're talking about the number 72, we're talking about the real force of light. Now let us read about what we just read from the Book of Formation, a commentary that was written almost a thousand years ago by Rabbi Abraham ben David of Hoskiris. That is, uh, your site is around uh, this day. Rutzel Omar, meaning that the Creator raised the letter Bet to be ahead with the force of the supernal crown, the supernal Keter. Vesam and gave it the power of Chokhmah. Chokhmah again, translated into English as wisdom, but Chokhmah, when you study Kabbalah, is not just wisdom. Chokhmah is the, uh, like, it's not wisdom, it's connecting to the whole inclusive source of all of wisdom and power. Okay? And formed with him, with the letter Bet, 
the, the planet Shabtai, okay? Asher mitachat l'shem alef bet gim yut tzadik, and this planet is under the control of the letters alef bet gim yut tzadik. Now, what is alef bet gim yut tzadik? We know one of the if we have 72 names, but we have also the name of 42 letters known uh, better as the prayer of the Anna Bekoach. The Anna Bekoach prayer is made of seven sentences, okay? And what's important in this prayer are the initials of every word. The first sentence, the initials are Aleph Ben Gimel, Yutav Tzadik, and this letter combination rules, controls the month of Capricorn, okay? And that name also, numerical value of that uh, letter combination is Ahavat Chinam, unconditional love. And it is, it has the ability to connect us to the universe before it broke to the universe the way it is in its holistic situation when everything is still unified as one big whole. That level is also called Chokhmah, okay? And that's why that gave Chokhmah to Shabtai, okay? So Saturn is supposed to be a very positive planet because it is full of light, okay? And then, but then the, uh, <clears throat> the Rabbad is saying, Although everybody knows that planet Saturn is responsible for destruction. Destruction. In the secret of the, uh, uh, the seventh year, the sabbatical. Sabbatical, again. How, what's the Hebrew name of Shabtai, of Saturn? Shabtai. Even in English, sabbatical means no working. Bring whatever you're doing to a halt. Okay? Because shab, in Hebrew, shvita, leashbit, means to stop working, to stop whatever is happening. So why? Why this is the sign, why this planet is also called as the big disaster in many, many astrological uh, wisdoms or systems. Vetam liotome mune, and this is very important, listen carefully. Vetam liotome mune al khubad, the reason why planet Saturn is responsible for destruction. Because planet Saturn is about not having any interest in whatever is connected to the body. Which means why planet Saturn is responsible for destructions? Because whatever, the moment the person is focused on my life is my physical health. My life is the money I have in the bank. My life is how many houses do I own? Or how much, how many stocks do I, uh, did I buy? Okay. All of that, which is illusion. It is physical and materialistic because planet Saturn is called in Kabbalistic teachings as the big teacher. How would you understand that all of these physical um, achievements mean nothing for the soul by taking it away from you? And therefore, wherever planet Saturn steps on, a big lesson starts. What is the lesson? Whatever you achieve in the physical world is an illusion. It cannot give you 
real fulfillment or real sense of protection. Therefore, if you really want to understand the rules of this universe, then you have to understand that the moment you are holding on to any physical, anything that of physical nature that will give you a sense of security and protection, planet Saturn is that force of the creator that will make sure to pull it under you, to pull it from you, from under, underneath your feet or around you, and suddenly you will feel without any shield. And then you realize after you fall a few times that has never been a real shield. What is the real shield? Spiritual power, spiritual light, and wisdom. That's the only real asset and shield in our world. And that's why Capricorn is not about bad, evil. It's about learning the lesson, taking away what you're holding on to in order to bring you to a place of understanding that that will never give you the security you're looking for. And therefore, if you're really into wisdom, chokhmah, you learn that 72 is also numerical value of chesed, loving kindness. Why loving kindness? Because Saturn is about the rules of the universe. It's about real wisdom, how you want really to understand where can you be safe and what are the rules for success. Spiritual wisdom will give you the rules of success. Spiritual wisdom will give you the directions how to achieve true protection and true fulfillment. And that will come through spiritual wisdom. But if you translate the need for protection and security into accumulating physical elusive uh, protection, planet Saturn will teach you, no, no, you're making a mistake. I'll take it away from you. And now you continue from now on. And now, let's continue. Ela, ala sagat aschalim apchutim. Planet Saturn is connected for the over the issue of achieving abstract wisdom, which means wisdom about the abstract, non-physical nature of this universe. Ala Sagat Hashem, achieving a theological wisdom, achieving knowledge of God's creation. Okay? Umimeno koach amenia la shedim, amevatlim evre adam. From this planet, Saturn, comes the force that creates uh, all kinds of these uh, deficiencies that make people um, lose control over parts of their bodies. Why? So how do you say that continues uh, the Rabad? If he's, if planet Saturn is responsible for wisdom, how come you have so many between all kinds of, like if we're talking about all kinds of disabilities, they are coming from the influence of Saturn. Could be a physical disability, okay? Could be a mental disability. And the understanding is those people have no knowledge of this physical world. However, they have a prophetic power, as it is said by the sages, that from the day the temple has been destroyed, the temple in Jerusalem has been destroyed, prophecy has been given only to uh, disabled people and for babies. 
as it says in the Talmud on Tracted Baba Batra. וזהו סוד, היותו ממונה על חולאים. That's why planet Saturn is responsible for diseases, because what does a disease do? It, it stops you from doing what you really do. And why is that connection to prophetic uh, understanding? Okay? Because Because it is not about this physical wisdom, as, as he said, because in order to reach a prophetic state, you need, and it's known, it is known from, a, from, a, from scientific research. When a person is, let's say, going into a meditative state, in order to reach a real high level meditative state, the, medi the, me the person who's meditating needs to disable the parts of the brain that are responsible for controlling the organs. So it's like you become, when somebody, whoever was in a very deep state of meditation, you lose the connection to your limbs. You don't feel like hot, cold, you don't feel your body. Because that part of your brain needs to be shut down in order for the, for the wisdom or the higher consciousness to settle in. And to reach a prophetic state, you need to learn how to shut down the physical. That's exactly the power of Saturn. So Saturn can connect us to real prophetic state, real state of spirituality, because Saturn can help us to shut down the physical aspect. The moment you're trying to grab the, the physical, as that's my only resource, Saturn doesn't like it. He will take it away from you because he will be the big teacher that tell you that will never be your goal and your fulfillment. Okay? So let's continue. Skip two sentences. It's also because it's the last of the visible planets, because Saturn is the outermost of the, uh, <clears throat> of the seven visible planets, heavenly bodies. Uh, beyond Saturn, we have uh, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto that are hinted in the Book of Formation, but they are not, they are not visible. Okay, Saturn is there, because of that, it is connected to the end of things, which means finishing a process, finishing a cycle. That's about Saturn also. And it is also responsible for all people. That's why it says whoever is born under the sign of Capricorn is like, is an, people will say is an old soul. It's like a little baby, but he has like this kind of responsibility of an older person. And because he is responsible for the wisdom and knowledge, Saturn is a planet responsible for the Jews. That's why the Jews are always in trouble in this physical world, right? <laughs> because how would somebody become wise when everything is comfortable, easy, with good fortune. No, no, no. If you really want to achieve great wisdom, you have to shut down a lot of the physical so you are, you'll be able to focus on the higher wisdom. And that's why, if you think about the survival of the fittest, along the generations, when Jews were always a persecuted minority, uh, only the real smart ones were able to survive all the persecutions and whatever limitations that were put and enforced upon them that you cannot own uh, property, you cannot own uh, this, you, you're limited only to certain occupations and so on and so forth. And the Jews always learn how to use 
whatever persecution they had in order to move on and to move upwards. Okay, so that's Saturn. And that's why Jews always were in trouble in this world because always when the Jewish people were trying to settle down and feel comfortable like everybody else, come Saturn and said, no, 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 you have to get out. You have to get out of England, 1297, out of France, uh, 1395, something like that, out of, uh, uh, out of Spain, 1492, and so on and so forth, and like, whatever. Okay. So I think uh, another thing that can help is shows about worries and anxieties about dirt, of people's dirt, which means they, they become disabled to take care of themselves. That's also a symptom of a Saturn action. Dark stuff, losing respect, losing uh, greatness. Uh, what else? There's some other stuff. I think we had enough. <laughs> I think we have enough. Okay, so what does it mean? It means that during this month of Capricorn and this year, uh, 5781 of 2020, is another thing. There is a, the most very in, one of the most important uh, conjunctions between Saturn and Jupiter, and it's happening around the December 21st, which is in a week from now, something like this. And that's this kind of conjunction between the two is happening every once in a, once in 11,000 years or something like this. Okay, so that means that there's some very special thing is happening. The whole thing of the conjunction of Saturn, learning, learning and together with, with, uh, with uh, Jupiter, Tzedek, it's all about humanity going into a new era of learning. What is it all about? And what is life about? And committing to a new journey. So we are, we are facing this month of Tevet, this year especially. Not just that it is the year of Tafshin Pei Aleph, which is the beginning of the decade of 5780. See 5780? 780 is a symbol of intervention of the upper forces of the Keter, the upper Keter. And this, this power forces humanity to relearn and reinvent itself uh, as a society, as a, as, a, as a group of humans living on this planet, reconnecting to wisdom. It's not going to be through easy lessons. And we know humanity is not moving forward through easy lessons. The point is, then if the person is motivated and is using the month of Capricorn to push himself, focus on higher levels of spiritual awareness and connection, this month, the month of um, Capricorn, is a very fruitful month because you use the awesome power of Shabtai to connect to it. But I'll give you an example why, how, what can we do with it? Okay, think about the name of the planet. The planet Shabtai is also connected. It was created on Sunday, okay, the first day of the week, but it is also, but it's ruling over Saturday. Now in English, Saturday, it's coming from the word Saturn day, the day of Saturn, okay? So, but Saturday is also called in Hebrew Shabbat, okay? If you really understand the meaning of Saturn day and the meaning of Shabbat, you understand it is the two faces of the month of Capricorn, okay? What are the two faces? It is said that, as we, as we just read, that Saturn is responsible for destroying whatever is materialistic. 
Therefore, it is known the ancient Babylonians did not do business or any work on Saturday. Why? Saturn destroys it. Whatever physical labor you do, with especially with the uh, focus that I have to work this day because I have to make a living because I have to move on. Okay? When a person works on Saturday, planet Saturn destroys it. So for you, the person who works on Saturday, it is a Saturn day. It is a day of destruction of whatever physical, materialistic achievement you make. But if you do not work on Saturday, you observe Shabbat. Shabbat is a day of a spiritual gain. That's exactly what it says over here. It is a day for learning. It's a day for meditation. It's a day for, uh, for prayer. It's a day for uh, contemplation and especially connecting to the non-physical aspect of our soul and the universe. This is what a Shabbat is about. So, like, so for some people, Shabbat is a day full of light, bliss, spiritual elevation of no second. There's no other day like this. Because it's like the whole universe is taking off on Shabbat and rising to levels you cannot achieve. No other way, there's no other day that you can achieve such high levels of spiritual perception, understanding, and existing on a realm that is so non-physical. And you're still in a physical body. That's only on Shabbat. But if you do not occupy yourself and focus on spiritual elevation on Shabbat, what's left? Saturn day. What does Saturn do to whoever comes to visit him on Shabbat? Destroys whatever they do. You make money, you lose it. Don't worry. The car is going to go total loss. You get the money will go fixing the car on the insurance on something else. It's like that's why it says there's no bliss in working on Shabbat. That's why the ancient Babylonians, who did not know about Shabbat, but they didn't work on on Saturday, because why should I just work, put so much effort, and then lose it and have the heartache? of losing it and the anxiety of losing it. I don't want to. So what do you do? If you know the cosmic rules, instead of working because you're afraid of losing money and then having the anxiety and the fear and the anguish of losing it, and then you're really becoming a nutcase like many Capricorns, okay? You prefer the, to keep Shabbat, to keep Shabbat. And when you're in Shabbat, it means that, what's the name of the planet? Shabtai. Shabtai. It's a planet of Shabbat. But it can turn also to a Shabbat. Anti-Shabbat. So Shabbat, the seventh day of the week, it has exactly the Saturn Capricorn face. Either you use the power, the ambition, the drive, the need, the lack, to spiritual elevation, and then you can reach levels of prophecy because you have the ability to shut down the physical, the need for physical control. And then you gain the spiritual wisdom. And what did we say 72 names are about? It's about lifting outside the limitation of the physicality. And that's why the letters of the month are Ein for the sign of Capricorn and Bet for planet Saturn. I'm bet 72. This is the letters of meditation. Lift off. Lift off and overcoming any physical limitation. How? By improving a spiritual awareness. So, therefore, Saturday, therefore, I'm sorry, uh, the month of Gdi, the month of Tevet, can be a month full of troubles, stress, upset, and so on, when, when you are, when we are uh, concentrating on achieving control only 
of, of through physical uh, physical means like money, work, controlling other people, stuff like this. However, if you really want to achieve a spiritual freedom, this is the month to focus on the spiritual freedom. In the month of Capricorn, in the month of Tevet, it's always when the weeks of Shovavim start. What are Shovavim? These are the weeks we read the first parashot of the book of Exodus. What is Exodus? From slavery to freedom. And therefore, the Kabbalists applied that that means that during these six weeks of Shmot Mishpatim, these six weeks will start always in the month of Tevet, we can reach levels of spirituality that, that are very, very high. And that's why those are days for prayer, for learning, for achieving high levels of spirituality. So you use the earth, earth of Capricorn, the ambition, the drive, the need to achieve what? Real, genuine, authentic control. How? When we control our spiritual state of mind and our spiritual connection, then we achieve true, authentic sense of security and control. When is the time to do that? When we deliver ourselves out of Egypt, which is the symbol for physicality, the narrow place of the physical body, and all the stuff that the physical body seduces us to use as a fake sense, to achieve sense fake of, of, a, of a security. Same thing, Pharaoh, that symbolizes the dark side, which is slavery, again, slavery, to what people say about you, to all kinds of stuff of the society around you, and not using wisdom in order to achieve uh, self-sufficiency and real self-balance and true freedom. So basically, this is what the month of Capricorn D is about. And it's an amazing opportunity. And we have to take this opportunity because uh, it's the only one we have. The month that we have is the opportunity. And so if we push away the anxieties that are coming from the body consciousness, from the Pharaoh, and lift off, lift ourselves above and using the energy of Hanukkah to every time the anxiety takes over, the anger, all of these physical senses of uh, mischief that are coming from wrong understanding of reality. Understanding of reality means whatever is happening is to give us an opportunity to reach higher level of perception. And that is the wisdom that we can achieve and acquire in this month. That's why it is so much recommended to elevate ourselves and invest more into spiritual study. It's easier during this month. Uh, thank you so much and have a happy, great month of Tevet Capricorn.